Now before I start, the thing to remember about this video is these were the good old days. 90% of game programming, all the coding, graphics and sound came straight out of the bedroom. And let's not forget, the majority of coders on average were around 16 years of age. And publishers, quite often than not, set unrealistic targets. The Amstrad CPC had a reputation for not being able to scroll. In fact, it was notorious for clunky scrollers. So this video is me going all out, Buzz Lightyear style, and stating, can scroll. It's also, in my personal humble opinion, the top 10 Amstrad CPC shoot 'em ups On with the show. Number 10, Sonic Boom. Quite like this one in the arcade, and it turned out really well on the Amstrad. The backgrounds utilized color well, but lacked detail, except for some metallic elements. The sprites are average, with drone planes resembling blurry floating figures. However, the scrolling is smooth, and the control response is excellent. Sadly, the sounds are rather plain. And it always grates when there's no in-game music. But with Sonic Boom, the further you progress, the better this game gets. With this one, you've got a difficulty curve that later on turns very nasty. And that's why it's in my number 10. Number 9, Marauder. Marauder aces the just one more go test. I quickly found myself hooked, determined to push ever forward with each attempt. It's an immensely playable shoot 'em up with plenty of variety. It's another Amstrad title that lived up to Houston's typical high standards. In my humble opinion, it probably should be higher up the list, but the difficulty curve might put some off. It scrolls smoothly, looks terrific, and despite the Amstrad CPC's limitations in the sound department, sounds half decent. Number 8, Forgotten Worlds. Not just a classic in the arcade, also a phenomenal home conversion to the Sega Mega Drive and the Amstrad CPC. This is one of those shoot 'em ups on the Amstrad you'd be crazy to miss. A fantastic conversion of a brilliant coin up. When I originally got this on the Amstrad CPC, it was a dream come true. I also remember the Amstrad Action Review where they gave it 80% and absolutely lapped it up. After reading that review, I rushed out, grabbed a slice of the arcade mayhem, and never looked back. The end result? Pure arcade chaos. Number 7, Snaps. This game is far from perfect. It's got a small playing window, tiny sprites, and the collision detection is iffy at best. But you know, much like a spirited 1960s sports car, its shortcomings are easily forgiven. All faults aside, the challenge is serious, and it possesses that magic of one more go. It's also proof that the Amstrad can scroll, and the evidence we need to prove without shadow of a doubt that we were shortchanged with Green Beret. Number 6, Silkworm. Tecmo's classic horizontal shoot 'em up had a long run in the arcades. In fact, recently we went on holiday in Devon and I found one in Selkham of all places. Its popularity was mainly due to an unusual two player mode. One player controlled a helicopter, the other a jeep. Another innovation of this game was the introduction of the goose. Mechanical pieces would gel together and the only vulnerability being the neck. Once destroyed, it left a power-up, which was not to be sniffed at. In fact, the Amstrad CPC conversion had a secret weapon. It had a button that you could press to make the game faster. Ah, number five, Mr. Helly. 
fantastic little horizontal shooter with a jolly little tune to accompany the action. It was an absorbing shoot 'em up and collect 'em up experience as you guided the adorable Mr. Heli through a brilliantly converted version of his coin up exploits. Packed with action, vibrant graphics, a fantastic soundtrack, and tons of playability. In short, an excellent blaster for your Amstrad CPC. Special mention also needs to go to the PC Engine version. That was a coin op conversion masterpiece. Fantastic times. Number four, the mighty UN Squadron. Now most people would disagree with this choice. The Amstrad CPC conversion is not exactly the fastest. But if it's in the arcade, it's in the Amstrad CPC conversion as well. And despite the Amiga being 16-bit, the Amstrad CPC conversion massively outshines it. And I don't care what you think or what you say, this is the one outside the arcade that I grew up with until I found the Super Nintendo. Hopefully, that's a video for another day. Number three, Light Force. This one I just had to add. It's the one I played the most as a kid. The game I came back to the most. And in my personal humble opinion, better than the 64 and the ZX Spectrum version. Again, people might disagree, but for me this game had everything. The challenge was just right. It's a shame it didn't have in-game music. It really needed it, as is the case for all Amstrad games as far as I'm concerned. But if you're a fan of shoot 'em ups Light Force is a must-play game for the Amstrad CPC. So to summarise, one of the top shoot 'em ups I've ever experienced on the Amstrad. Number 2 P47 Thunderbolt. When I first saw this on the Amstrad CPC playing in WH Smith's on display, the graphics whore within me had to have it. That's correct, I'm a 16 color secret lemonade drinker. In fact, anything outside of Mode Zero to me is the enemy. Give me 16 colors over four colors or less any day of the week and twice on Sunday. I mean, I'd have bought a flipping ZX Spectrum if I wanted near monochrome. And that's why only Mode 0 games make the list. That's correct, Mode 1 and Mode 2 are the wannabe children of Sir Clive Sinclair. I'm sorry, but there's no room in this inn. Special mention, Cybernoid. Now this one could easily have made the top 10. It's as good if not better than any of the other 8-bit versions and it featured all the colours of the rainbow. You've got terrific sound, terrific music and an even better challenge. But it all comes down to personal taste, personal opinions and I think on a different day it makes the top 10. It's certainly in the top 20. And Cybernoid 2 is just as good. Ah, special mention, Warhawk. Best played on the Commodore 64, but it's still a fantastic game and a fantastic achievement on the Amstrad CPC. Just look at that scroll. There you go, ZX Spectrum fanboys and Commodore 64 alike. Look at that silky smooth vertical scroll. It's a thing of beauty and a sight to behold. And let's not forget, a fantastic challenge. If, like me, you're a shoot 'em up fanatic, you won't be kicking this one out of bed. I'm lucky as well to own the original, the 199 budget release from Firebird. So if you've not played it, check it out. Special mention, 
Mission Genocide. Now this is probably the smoothest vertical scroll on the Amstrad CPC and it was achieved by a technique called Rotovision. Now that's as technical as I'm willing to go but just know the Amstrad can do smooth, silky smooth, vertical scroll and check out the speed of this thing definitely running at a rate of knots and on the Amstrad CPC it's better than Warhawk and technically wipes the floor with light force there's lots of levels but sadly it just repeats over and over with a proper ending I'd have had it higher on the list Special mention, Guardian 2. Now, programmer Steve Evans, he's a bit of a legend on the Amstrad CPC. He did Blagger, he did this, Guardian 2. He did Microball, which is fantastic and really fast. He also programmed the phenomenal Who Dares Wins 2, every fan's favourite, and the excellent Zed. But for me personally, in my humble opinion, this is his finest hour. This is his magnum opus. Any other day, this is in my top 10. It definitely makes my top 20. Special mention, Killer Cobra. Now I suspect this one is a clone of Super Cobra by Konami. It was released by Mastertronic and I paid $1.99. There's 15 sectors to power through. Pete Wiseman was the programmer for this one and he achieved something of a technical marvel. This game runs at 50 frames per second. I think my video capture software is trying to capture it at 60 frames per second, which is why it's slightly blurry, but you have to hunt this down. You have to load it up under emulation or on real hardware just to see how silky smooth the whole thing is. Pete was only 16 when he wrote this, so massive kudos. Oh, and get this, he was a fan of the TV series, Airwolf. Special mention, Dr. Destructo, or otherwise known as the Island of Dr. Destructo. I had to include this one, it's fantastic, it's a wonderful single player game and an even better two player mission. I know it's not your typical horizontal or vertical shoot 'em up, but it's another one of those games that really highlights the art of the possible and why ultimately the Amstrad CPC was a very good platform for gaming. This one features night and day, spread out over 21 stages, but it's basically an arcade clone of Two Tigers from Bally Midway, and for my money, it's every bit as good, if not better. Number one, X Out. It's technically the fastest, it's technically the most complex, I think graphically, it's an absolute stunner, the challenge is just right, and it's another one of those retro games that I still take for a spin, even today. Quoting Amstrad Action from back in the day, who awarded this one 88%, X Out set the standard for others to follow. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It was a long time in the making. It's very difficult to juggle a job, two kids, a wife, and a YouTube life. Please subscribe if you want to see more. Even better, leave a comment. Don't forget, keep it constructive. And until next time, ta a bit.